What's going on guys, today we are back. I went to Nelson the other day and I picked up an e-locker. Um, now this e-locker, it does not have an actuator, but we got that from the auto wrecker. So, the front end is getting an e-locker, that is the plan. Check it out. So if you could just like excuse the terrible language on it, uh, it's actually the pinion bearing that's bad. That's why that's written on there. The actual locking assembly and it works, which is perfect. Um, and the plan is to take the 456s out of my truck and put them in this third because the V6 thirds work perfectly fine in the e-locker housing. As I was saying, the locker like mechanism itself works just great. As you can see right now, it's open. This gear is out, but uh, try not to shake my bench too much. Boom, now it's locked. So the plan now is I'm just gonna clean it up. I'm gonna take my grinder, get her up nice and pretty, and then put some paint on it. And it is all painted up. Ooh, looks good. Let's wire it up and see if we can get it going. So as you can see, I've got everything here to do it. Butt connector is to attach it to the e-locker switch, solder, inline fuse, e-locker, plug and harness. So what I've done is I made five of these 10 foot sections of wire and I'm attaching each side to one of these. And uh, I'll run them to the truck. Obviously the wire it, color isn't gonna match. I'm gonna take notes on each side before I actually put it in, but should be good. All right, check it out. So lock, ooh, unlock, mint. Look at this mess of wires. Ugh, time to clean it up. This switch is the double throw, double pull switch from low range off road. As you can tell, it's got 10 pins. We will only be using seven of these pins. So let's start with power. This is the power wire here. This is just run to the battery with a fuse and it's quite straightforward. I just made these connect like this. And then when you turn this around like this, this is how it goes. Okay, so the first power pin is going right here at the top left. Second power pin is going two down on the right, and the third power pin is going four down on the left. So, two down on the right, just like that, and four down on the left, boom. So now the power is fully connected. So next up we got the green and yellow wire. The green and yellow wire goes four down on the right. One, two, three, four. So that right there, green and yellow wire. Next up we have the green wire. Green wire is three down on the left. One, two, three. Next up we have green and red. Green and red is three down on the right. And that should leave one last wire, this one, which is green and black. Green and black, two down on the left. The last remaining spot, ish. Boom, now it's all wired up and we can give this a test. It works. Also, there's a white and black wire that comes off the actuator as well. That is just a ground, so that's super straightforward. I just grounded it below there. I didn't show you because it's, I mean, it's just a ground. Um, also, if you are a little bit confused by this, don't worry. I'm gonna put a link in the description to where you can find a diagram of the pinout for all those, uh, all the pins and their corresponding colors. And it should be super easy for you. It's kind of hard to film in there by myself in the kind of cramped area. So, yeah. Putting the e-locker 
in the truck right now. Last you saw, we did the wiring and uh, tested the actuator, put the plug in the dash, and it's ready to go. Now, I just need to retrofit the actual e-locker third into the axle. I've got it on the hoist here at my dad's shop, and uh, yeah, we're gonna pull the diff and retrofit it on the bench. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually just gonna take apart the whole hub assembly, get the bursts out and everything, and then get the third out of the middle uh, before I actually pull the whole diff to make it a little bit lighter and easier on myself. Cause it's all gotta come apart anyways um, to get the third out for the e-locker. Okay, so I got the diff pull, or the third pulled, and uh, I noticed a surprise. There's a tooth missing, but just one, and there's like no other damage anywhere on it. That's wild. Okay, so last night you seen me pull the front diff from my pickup and we noticed that one of the teeth on the ring gear was destroyed. The solution. Turns out Kyle had this parts forerunner laying around for a surf and uh, it happens to have the right ratio we need. So, there's our parts. Let's pull the diff and uh, get it in the e-locker. Survey says she's in good shape. No missing teeth. It's a little bit dirty because it fell in the dirt when I took it out, but uh, yeah, these are my gears. All right, so if you're gonna do the e-locker retrofit like I am, you're gonna wanna pick up a gasket. Even if you don't plan on using it and you wanna RTV, you gotta get a gasket because it works as the perfect template to know where to cut and where you need to put the new studs. This edge here doesn't quite line up with the edge here and you need to put a stud there. So, you gotta get your welder, you gotta build up just some material here, and then drill through it and clip this stud. Also, you need to make room for the e-locker, and this whole notch here is a perfect template to show you where you need to cut. You'll notice that these studs over here don't line up anymore. They actually mount down here. So you need to remove this stud and drill the holes here too, but that's the easy part. First up, I'm gonna remove the studs we no longer need, and then I'm gonna take the wire wheel, and clean up where we're gonna have to weld. All right, and now that I got the studs out, you can actually see the gasket fits flush and it gives you a perfect template of where you actually gotta cut it. So I'll take my marker here and we'll do this line here. And then we can actually trace the holes here too where we need to drill for the new studs. Shake hands and take things as they So, once both the holes are drilled, take your M8 by 125 cap and uh, tap it out so that you can bolt the studs in. And with that tapped, our uh, studs should just screw right in there. Boom. And if we take this, perfect. Now to notch this and add more material to these sides so that we can stud those too. Now 
that I got that notched out, I decided to throw the e-locker actually in to the housing and uh, it friggin' fits! Sweet! Next step, grab the welder, add the material where we need it, and uh, drill and tap. Alright, now that I laid down a bead both up here and down here, I'm getting my grinder and I'm going to grind it down flat and flush with the rest of the rim here. Uh, then I'll put the gasket on and see if I added enough material or not. Like this build up of material is good, but uh, I actually missed a little bit. I need to add some just a little bit lower and that'll be good. And the top is like bang on where we want it to be, but I need to build it up just a little bit more at the back. And uh, yeah, it'll be good to go. So if you look, we built up enough metal and uh, we can now put two studs right in here. So uh, let's mark it, tap it, throw it out. Alright, both those holes are drilled and tapped. So now it's time to put your longer studs in these holes. By the way, the studs and the switch I got from Low Range Off-Road. Link to those products in the description below. Not sponsored or anything, but I thought it'd be helpful in this video if you knew where to get them from. I don't care, it's a double dare. I ain't scared, you best be where you best. And the axle modifications are done. Okay, so you might notice we're actually at my place now. I only had my dad shop for a couple of days there to get this done. So what I did was I actually put the whole front diff back together without the third member and without the burr fields just so I could drive it home. But today, I finally got the third back with the 456 gears installed. So before we throw this in the truck, I'm gonna put the actuator in the diff and uh, watch it lock, make sure it all works before throwing it in. Okay, so now it's time for the moment of truth. I got Sam sitting there in the truck, ready to hit the lock switch. I've got the actuator attached, it's wired in, and uh, let's test it out. So I didn't realize this before doing the swap, but there's a bit of an issue of clearancing. I need to grind down a bit of the back to get it to clear the to clear the U-bolts. Also, when I put the actuator in, it should work just fine. I gotta cut this top bolt or top hole off with the grinder though to make it work. So far I've cleared all of this. As you can see, I took a fair bit of material off there and uh, I'm hoping that's gonna clear. I haven't test fit it yet. Um, next up, I'm gonna do the actuator at the same time here. Take off that bolt hole. And it looks like this top bolt on this cap uh, cannot be installed. It's just gonna be on the way of the leaf spring. So I'm gonna take that out. And uh, in theory, maybe this will fit. And as you can see, this top part here is now cut and is flush with uh, the little of the red thing behind it. I've also removed this bolt, so uh, let's go test fit it and see how it works. I have finally made enough clearance, but dang, is that ever tight. I was right, you do actually have to remove that top bolt and that red thing. You need to take the long studs out when you're putting this in, otherwise that red thing gets in the way, but you could put them back in after. So now I'm gonna pull this, RTV it, and uh, put it back together.
Okay, and that is it. The e-locker is successfully installed in the front of my truck. Oh, I'm so stoked to go test that out. Speaking of which, stay tuned because uh, next week's video is definitely gonna be trying out that new e-locker. Yeah, so I got the third in. Now I gotta pull the tires off, throw the berths and hubs and everything back together. And uh, then she's good to go. But that's all you guys are gonna see on uh, this week's episode. So uh, yeah, if you like the stuff and you thought it was helpful, Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.